My name is Bilgin Ibrahim. I'm product manager at Diagrid. And in this talk, I will try to quickly tell you where the circuit breakers and other related features in your applications are heading to. And uh, what's the opportunity for cloud native really in here? So let's get started with the really the basics. I would say everything we do in software is about more efficiently uh, using the infrastructure primitives and expressing business logic. Um, for example, we have different programming languages which are good for different things. We have uh, Go, Rust, and C++, which are good for infrastructure. We have uh, Java and .NET, which are good for backend applications, Python for data processing, and JavaScript. Um, and then we have different frameworks and runtimes to use those. Then we have different kind of data stores, which are good for storing data for different use cases for retrieving that. For example, there is database for transactional processing, columnar databases for reporting, there is key value stores, document stores, you know, graph databases, and now vector databases, and so forth. And then as developers, we have to use different clients to interact with these um, different types of data stores. And the more applications we create, the more granular they get. Uh, such as microservices and functions, there is, will be more networking. So there are different communication styles, such as request, response, publish, subscribe. There are different data formats, you know, REST, RPC, GraphQL, and so forth. And the more data store there are, again, we have to talk to these different data stores. And I would say this kind of gives us an idea of different trends. I would say going forward, there will be uh, even more polyglotism, multiple languages. There will be applications that have to be deployed on different clouds that have to uh, use different storage mechanisms and we'll have more distributed apps. But we are at CNCF, so this is not a news. Everything at KubeCon is about polyglotism, multi-cloud, distributed apps. How, how is that related? I think for that, we have to look at how applications have been evolving. So not so long ago, we had monolithic applications where the business logic and the middleware capabilities, the repetitive capabilities we need would be in the same deployment unit. So then we got microservices, we got you know, FAS and Lambda. And today we are at the point where we have distributed applications that are composed of modules of different size and shape. You know, there are a combination of functions, microservices, micro monoliths, services that are not so micro, and so forth. And they are all written in different languages, deployed on different places and different shape. And I would say the same way uh, Kubernetes and Knative in the past uh, helped the ops by abstracting the infrastructure, there is an opportunity now for cloud native to create new abstractions on top of these uh, repetitive developer needs, the, uh, which were called middleware in the past, and expose these needs on top of polyglot APIs that can be used by uh, all developers on any cloud. Really, that's the point. So if you look at there, you know, what are those needs? Um, for the purpose of this talk, I've grouped them in four categories. I would say every application you know, interacts with uh, other things, and those are either around lifecycle interactions, uh, talking to other services, to third-party endpoints, or um, some kind of state storage. So let's uh, go into each of these. Um, today, if you're a developer, you know, once you implement your business logic and you package it in a container, I would say there is very little left uh, to do around the deployment and lifecycle. Other than you know, implementing a help point and exposing some metrics, everything else is taken care of by the uh, platform, such as Kubernetes and Knative and the ops team. So the platform will provision resources for you. It will find the right node. It will start your application and even scale it. You don't have to do anything. So all that is taken care of. Um, if we go to the next category of interactions, um, let's say a service A is calling service B. And there are a number of things that can happen uh, in the middle that are completely transparent to the application and developer isn't, doesn't have to be aware. For example, that networking uh, traffic, that request can be routed to different services, that's service discovery. That traffic can be routed to different service instances, that's load balancing. It can be routed to different service versions, that's uh, A-B testing and Canada releases and so forth. Um, the networking traffic can get resiliency properties such as circuit breakers, timeouts, um, and so forth. It can get additional security properties with encryption and access control. It can get, uh, we can observe telemetry. 
basically, we can get all of these things without changing the application in any way. And the common way to do that today is with uh, service mesh technologies. Uh, we don't have time to go into details of this, but we can briefly see how this has evolved, you know, starting with language-specific libraries uh, from within the applications and moving into sidecar to node proxy and going deeper into the operating system. And the point here is that these transparent responsibilities, you don't have to worry about those within your application. They will go outside of your application and even to the core of the operating system. But there are other things that developers have to care about. Um, in this example, I have a service, service A, that's calling, uh, talking to some kind of third-party endpoint. And in such a scenario, sometimes you have to perform you know, repetitive things such as connecting to an endpoint. You, know, you would need some kind of connector that has to do protocol conversion from one protocol to another. It may have to do transformation of the message or it has to do some kind of content-based routing based on the actual message or topic route that to specific uh, application. So all of these things today, they are primarily done from within the applications, you know, with frameworks such as Camel and Spring, that's in Java. But uh, what's happening here is that these responsibilities are moving outside of your application into frameworks such as, you know, Dapper, Knative, and they are be becoming available to any language. So they are not moving to the platform, but moving outside of your application. And the last category, I call them um, stateful interactions. And the whole point here is if we have you know, two services that has to uh, communicate, and when service A sends a request, and that request is stored in some kind of medium between service A and B. Typically, that's a, that's a message broker where the message is persisted. But the same semantic applies if the message of that request has to be persisted to a workflow engine or it has to be stored in some kind of database and you can use change data capture and outbox in order to, uh, to deliver that to second service. Other patterns here like idempotent filter which needs to store uh, requests uh, into database to filter those uh, and so forth. And the point here is previously these responsibilities were done within the application with the language specific frameworks such as, you know, I have here conductor, cadence, but even those frameworks now are adding uh, uh, support for other languages and these responsibilities are moving outside of your application, becoming cloud native with frameworks such as Dapper. So what, why am I telling all that? That's the key takeaway. I would say that two kinds of changes that are happening with all of these repetitive uh, developer responsibilities. On the, on the left-hand side, we have you know, transparent responsibilities such as lifecycle, uh, low-level networking, uh, that are moving into the platform, even down to the operating system. But then there are other responsibilities that you need the developer uh, to do that impacts the application and the business logic. These are you know, explicit interactions, stateful interactions. And they are moving outside of the application into you know, polyglot uh, APIs that you can call from any language, that you can call from you know, any cloud and any shape of your application. And that's really the opportunity for cloud native uh, to address these responsibilities and offer them to all developers. Uh, that, that's all, so enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you.